Today, we're going to show you how to install a 110 volt circuit breaker. In this circuit breaker box, we're going to show you how to uh, hook up, put in a new circuit breaker, and uh, hook up a wire to it that has already been pulled up to and adjacent to the box. And as always, you should always check your local codes officer for, I don't know, rules? Absolutely. Safety uh, rules. Or... In some states and jurisdictions, you cannot do this work by yourself or where we're located. As homeowners, we're allowed to do this work. So this job will take about 15 minutes to complete. Here's the tools that I use. There'll be a list of them in the description. I have a multimeter, some electrical tools, some cut-in tools. I got some couple screwdrivers. I used a power drill, but I did not need it. Um, I got a hammer, pliers, and a stapler to hold insulation out of the way. So I'm using a screwdriver and pliers to take out staples to pull the insulation back. There's a wire that's already in this wall that I never connected, and I'm trying to find that right now. The next step is to take the cover off the panel. Here you can use a large screwdriver, or if you have a square bit for a driver, you can use that. So you usually want to leave a bolt hanging on the top so the panel doesn't fall on you. And take off all the other screws and take off the entire panel. So you can see on the top of this panel, it doesn't have a main circuit breaker. That's because this is an auxiliary panel. If you're working inside your main panel, you're going to want to turn off your main breaker. Normally you can't turn off the power to the main breaker because only the electric company can remove your meter. So if you're using your main panel, you can be very careful not to touch the large wires coming into the main breaker on the top. And once you turn off that main breaker, you're going to lose all your lighting. So you're going to want to either be running off a generator or be using, uh, using a flashlight to do this work. Normally the circuit testers will beep when you turn it on so that you can tell that it's working. Um, so the first one I used didn't beep so I'm thinking that that's not a positive way of telling that there's no power. The second tester I used actually doesn't beep by design when you turn it on. But then when I put it on the cables it says that there is power so now I'm really wondering about what's going on here. I took out the multimeter and I test the voltages at several different points in the panel and I found that all the voltage were zero. Again, it's possible for multimeters to not always uh, measure the voltage, so you, you want to be careful. The best way to verify that your multimeter is working is to test the circuit while it's still powered to verify it has power, tell your friend to turn off the circuit breaker, and then measure it again to verify that the voltage is at zero. Here we're looking inside the panel to find out a good place to put that cable through. So we're going to try to find a, the correct size knockout. It looks like all the knockouts here on the left are half inch knockouts. So I take a screwdriver here and I'll just hit this thing with a hammer if necessary. Some of these knockouts are easier to take out than others. So once you get it started a little bit you can grab it with a plier or you know bend it back and forth until you fatigue the metal and the knockout comes out. So here I'm measuring the wire to make sure that there's enough insulation coming up into the panel. So by code I believe you have to put in a quarter inch of insulation up into the panel. So it looks like I'm leaving about an inch. You can always put in more insulation. Uh, the reason why you want to cut back this insulation pretty much as much as you can is because it makes it a lot more easy easily manageable inside the, inside the panel. So I score the outer jacket very, very lightly with a razor knife. And then with a small cable like this, you can slide the outer jacket right off the cable. So this is a typical strain relief that you'd use. It's uh, marked as a 3 8 inch trade size for a half inch knockout. But if you actually look at the size on the panel, it's larger than half an inch. So it, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what you want. But for the small knockouts, that's the correct uh, fitting there. So if you look at the knockout closely, you have the screws that hold down your cable, and then you have this other screw on the back that holds the 
uh, fitting into the panel. So you separate the two halves and then screw it back on when it's in the panel. <clears throat> then you take the cable and feed the cable through the fitting. Once the cable is through the fitting to secure it, you just screw down the screws. So if you're inside a house, you'll almost certainly have to use an arc fault circuit breaker, but in this case I'm in my garage, so I'm just putting on a regular breaker. This breaker has a little notch on the back. They slide into a little hook, and then the forward of the breaker slides into that panel uh, bus, and that's it. That's the, that circuit breaker is in place now. So I'm taking the wire, and I'm kind of lining it up with that circuit breaker, and I'm just going to cut it a little bit long so that I can hook up this black conductor into that breaker. In this case, uh, all three connections, the black, the white, and the copper, go to about the same location, so I'm cutting them all the same length. If you have a set of snips like this, you can see that it'll tell you uh, what the correct hole is for to cut solid conductor cable and stranded conductor cable. We're using solid conductor cable, and this is 12 gauge, so I look on the solid side where it has the number 12, and that will be the right size to cut these conductors. So I'm cutting off about a half inch of insulation. And the first thing I'm doing here is I'm putting the black conductor into the breaker. So if the screw on the breaker is all the way down, you're going to want to open that up a little bit until you can get your conductor in there. And then you're going to slide your black conductor under that screw. There'll usually be a little hole down that you have to slide it under as well and just hold it in place you'll maybe you'll see a tiny little bit of copper showing on the end there and seat it all the way out and screw that screw back down you want to screw this down pretty tight after the black conductor is on we are going to do the white conductor so depending on your circuit breaker box your uh, white bus wire will be usually pretty adjacent just slightly outside of where you put the circuit breakers and then for the copper conductor you'll have a third bus that will be usually on the outside of the box and you can line up your conductor with one of those screws and screw that down as well. So because this is an auxiliary panel the copper bus and the white bus are separated uh, but in your system if you're looking at your main panel these might be the same bus so you'll be hooking up your coppers and your whites to the same location. Once you're done with all that you can neaten up the wires so that they go where you want and they're not going to be in the way of any of the screws for the panel and not in the way for anything else. Assuming you've already hooked up the other side of the wire, you, all you have to do is put power back to the panel and turn on the breaker. 